one who leads. It is the simple definition of a captain. The captain leads with but one goal. The captain shows no compromise. The captain will never surrender. One goal, one incredible man to achieve it. The captain, Marc Messier. The arrival of Marc Messier in 1991 marked the dawn of a new era in New York Rangers hockey. One built on heart, one built on unquenchable desire, an era where doubt and disappointment would be erased. And glory would return to the world's most famous arena. Number 11, Marc Messier! For Beak fights Messier wide open, he moves in! He oh, scores! Oh. He shoots! He scores! Number 500! In 1994, through the uncommon leadership of Marc Messier, the New York Rangers would accomplish what so many had said was impossible. soul, and desire that had symbolized Marc Messier's brilliant career would help make the New York Rangers Stanley Cup champions. The waiting is over! The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions! And this one will last a lifetime! In a professional career that spanned more than 25 years, Marc Messier established himself not only as one of the greatest players to ever lace up a pair of skates, but as one of the true great leaders in all of sport. He helped his teams capture six Stanley Cups. He led by example. He made everyone around him faster, stronger, and more courageous. He made everyone a winner. One goal, one incredible man. The captain, Marc Messier. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Davidson, and welcome to another special evening here at Madison Square Garden. Many legends have graced the garden ice. Hall of Famers have been made here. Miracles have happened here. The best that ever played the game played their best games here. But for all the decades and all the history and all the proud and valiant men that ever wore the Rangers sweater, there has only been one captain. So tonight we say thank you. Tonight we celebrate. Tonight we raise the banner as only New York can, to the captain, Marc Messier.
New York. Almost 15 years ago, I learned that I had been traded to the New York Rangers. I said to myself, my life has just changed forever. I had a great understanding of the Rangers' history, and the challenge of being a part of a team committed to ending the Stanley Cup drought sent chills through my body. The Rangers' newest captain, wearing uniform number 11, Mark Messier. When I was introduced as the next captain of the New York Rangers, I remember saying to myself as the crowd roared, I will do anything in my power to bring a Stanley Cup to the fans of the city. For the empty net, Mark Messier, do you believe it? Do you believe it? He said we will win game six. He has just picked up the hat trick. I feel the 94 Cup team will be remembered as just that, a team. We became a team that the city could be proud of on and off the ice. In the end, we all came together. We were the ultimate team, and to me, that was the most beautiful thing of all. We leaned on each other to ultimately do what no other team could do for 54 years, and I thank each and every one of you for your support and commitment to a journey we will never forget. The waiting is over! The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions! And this one will last a lifetime! Frightening images we all witness will be forever etched in our memories. However, for me, what I will never forget is a human spirit, resolve, compassion the people of New York demonstrated during this crisis. Together we fought through maybe the toughest test of our lives and show what makes New York such a special place. We will never forget the loved ones that were lost, but we can feel proud of the way we stood together. It is you, the people, the friendships, the handshakes, the smiles, the good luck wishes, to all the people who work to make the garden what it is and what it stands for. Thank you. Thank you for being you and accepting me into your domain. Retiring was one of the toughest decisions I have ever had to make, and I know in my heart it was the right decision. So thank you, Garden Faithful. Thank you for believing in me and allowing me the honor of being your captain for 10 years. Thank you for making the garden feel like home and for making my family part of the garden family. Thank you, Garden Faithful. Your captain, Mark Messier. We can all remember and go back to October 7th, 1991, when Mark was introduced as the new captain of the New York Rangers. None of us knew then that he would become simply the captain. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that brought New York the Stanley Cup, the captain, Mark Messier.
Their names will forever re be remembered by everyone privileged enough to be in this building and in this city on that great night, June 14th, 1994. They said, they said if you won that night, they would walk together forever. Please welcome members of that Stanley Cup Championship Rangers team, led by the greatest trophy in sports, the Stanley Cup. of seeing their banners hang from the garden rafters.
history to have his number retired. The incomparable Eddie Jackman. Mark, before we hear from some of the special people gathered here in your honor, we would like to present you with a few gifts to celebrate all that you have meant to the Garden Faithful and to the New York Rangers organization. Ladies and gentlemen, besides hockey, Mark has a great passion for big game sports fishing. And now Jeff Bukaboom and Nick Kiprios from this 94 Cup team, they will present Mark with a personalized fighting chair featuring the team's slogan from that year, Heave Ho! So the spirit of 94 will always be with Mark on the high seas. And keeping with that theme from this year's Ranger squad, alternate captains Yarmir Yager, Steve Ruchin, and Darius Kasparaitis are presenting Rod with personalized fishing rods and reels so that the next generation of Rangers can also be with him on his great fishing expeditions. Representing the group that is about to welcome Ark into its exclusive ranks, the retired Rangers jerseys, Mike, Eddie, and Rod are presenting Mark with a portrait of that unforgettable 94 Cup celebration in New York's Canyon of Heroes.
Mark. Mark has long been known for his dedication to the Tomorrow's Children's Fund. Here, here tonight from TCF are Sharon Romano, Jack Zafredi, and Robert Griffo in support of Mark's extraordinary commitment. The Rangers, along with the Messier family, have commissioned a limestone sculpture of a golden eagle entitled, Out of the Union of the Heart and Soul Comes Vision. Sharon will unveil the sculpture inspired by the strength and majesty of Mark himself. This sculpture will be a permanent part of the newly unveiled Mark Messier Skyway at the Children's Wing of the Hackensack University Medical Center. Ladies and gentlemen, also in support of Mark's commitment, please welcome the president and CEO of tonight's event sponsor, XM Satellite Radio, Hugh Panero, and Rangers season ticket holder, Matthew DeCarlis, who are presenting Mark with a check for the Tomorrow's Children's Fund for $211,000. Ladies and gentlemen from XM Satellite Radio and also you the fans, you donated too. Thank you very much Ranger fans. We all know how important Mark's family is to him. So the idea for this final gift from the Rangers organization and the garden is an answer to Mark's most personal wish. We've been told his biggest dream is to bring his entire family to Ireland to celebrate his mother, his mother's Mary Jean O'Day's heritage. We are proud to welcome 19 members of Mark's family, including his parents, Doug and Mary Jean, his fiance, Kim Clark, his children, Lion, Douglas, and Jacqueline, his sisters, Jenny and Mary Kay, his brothers, Paul, and other members of the Messier family. They are being led by members of the New York City Fire Department Ceremonial Pipe and Drum Unit as we present Mark with that special trip to the Emerald Isle in 2006. We hope the memories they share will be as cherished as all of the memories Mark has brought to all of us over these many years. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to hear from some of Mark's closest friends. They've been some of the Rangers' greatest players. He has recently returned to the Rangers organization as one of the most popular Rangers of all time. Please welcome Adam Graves. I can't do anything but smile when I see Mess's face. On, be on behalf of all of his teammates, Mess, it was a privilege to skate alongside you. And it is an honor for us to be here to celebrate Mess the person, Mess the player, mess our friend and leader. On October 4th, 1991, Mark became a New York Ranger. I have often been asked, what was the greatest impact Mark had on our entire team. And in one word, belief. He made us believe that the Stanley Cup was our destiny. He changed the, cul he changed the culture. He made us stronger as players, stronger as a team, and stronger as an organization. Mess taught us about the tradition and the privilege, the privilege of being a ranger. Early in the 1991-92 season, before a game, a jersey fell to the ground in the dressing room. Mess jumped up, almost startling everyone in the dressing room, quickly ran over, picked up the jersey, and put it back in the locker high, reinforcing the fact that that jersey was a flag that we wore on our chest. <laughs> Never again would a Ranger jersey touch the floor. Mess's passion, love, and understanding of what it means to be a Ranger was etched in his smile and on his heart for all of us to see. Mess led with compassion, emotion, and he was honest. He never let, asked anyone to do anything that he wasn't willing to do himself. Anything. In thinking about today's celebration, I grabbed a pen and a paper and I wanted to put together what I felt would be the prototype for the ultimate player. And it goes something like this. He would skate like mess. He would pass like mess, third all time in assists. He would shoot like mess, seventh all time in goals. He would have the durability of mess, second all time in games. And then there's the intangibles, the big hits, the big face-offs, his ability to play inside the rules late in the game. And then there was the intimidation factor, his ability to play outside the rules. Package all this together with his leadership 
His big game performances, May 25th, 1994, and six Stanley Cups, and in particular, 1994. We were not only teammates, we were all fans. We do not need a video. In fact, most of us, in fact, everyone in this building can close our eyes and remember Mark skating down the off wing, getting up on one foot and putting the puck inside the far post, right here at the Garden. Mark, for anyone who has had the good fortune of being a part of your life, thank you. Thank you. I know a great deal of Mark's strength comes from his family, and I want to thank the entire family. They epitomize what family is all about. I would be remiss if I didn't include one other significant person and friend who wasn't able to be here tonight, who, who, who I know, Mark, will be up there with you in the rafters one day, Brian Leach. Hi, Mark. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Sorry I couldn't be there tonight to celebrate your great Rangers career. You know, it doesn't seem that long ago that I was in the Rangers dressing room, 20 years old, preparing to play the Edmonton Oilers for the first time. My teammates were giving me advice about the different players on the team. When it came to you, they said, oh, he's a great player, very fast, can be dirty, get him to take penalties. So sure enough, first period, I'm pinching down the wall, trying to keep the puck in you're going the other direction. Instead of lifting my stick or chipping the puck by me or even pancaking me with your shoulder, you proceed to spear me in the gut. As I go down, I hear no whistle, realize there's no penalty, and get up and get back into play. It's then that it dawns on me that I've received NHL lesson number one from Marc Messier, a man with four Stanley Cups, an intimidating reputation with the referees, easily trumps a wide-eyed NHL rookie with 10 games of experience in the NHL. Fortunately for me, you would soon be traded to the Rangers, and with your help, my NHL education would continue in a less painful manner. When you moved into the city, we drove to and from practice together. We're roommates on the road. And during that time and over the years, we had a lot of laughs, talked to I had a lot of conversations about our team, about our family, and about life in general. Yet I was influenced more as a player and a person, not from anything specific you said to me, but more from your interaction with others. The way you treated your family with love and respect, the enthusiasm and excitement you had when sharing in a teammate's success, and the importance of including everybody and the care and genuine concern you had for other people's lives away from the rink. And certainly your ability to express to us as a team the sacrifices and hard work that was needed to reach our goals. And then showing us that these weren't just words by going out and leading the way. The respect I had for you as a person made each bad game or loss hurt just a little bit more because I didn't want to let you down. Yet each good game or win was magnified <clears throat> because of your excitement and your acknowledgement in a job well done. You know, your accomplishments, Mark, on the ice will live in the record books forever. I just wanted to thank you personally for your guidance and friendship over the last 18 years. Oh yeah, and for helping me get my name on the Stanley Cup in 94. Mark, you're a great man, you're a great champion, you are the captain. Congratulations on an amazing career, my friend.
And next, we'll hear from someone who knows what it feels like to see his number hang from the Garden Raptors, number 35. Come on up, Mike Richter. I want to thank you for having me here at Mark Messi Night, sponsored by Kleenex. Eddie, uh, we were talking in the back, and Eddie Jockman before we went out said, it's fantastic what they do here in New York, but why would they ever give Mark a barber chair? And Mark, that barber chair is not going on my boat, so <laughs> enjoy it. I'm supremely, pr supremely privileged tonight to be asked to pay tribute to perhaps the most complete athlete to ever put on a pair of skates. I know I can speak for Eddie and Rod to say that we're excited and humbled to share this place of honor with you. <laughs> there are three unique aspects of Mark's personality that made him so very special as an athlete and effective as a leader. First, he at all times exemplified what needed to be done to be a champion. He was a near perfect example of mental toughness. Secondly, he celebrated the accomplishments of others with as much intensity as he pursued his own. And third, he recognized each person for their particular contribution to the team's success. A wise man once said, become the change you wish to see in others. Mark did not just say what needed to be done, he did it, he lived it. Mark Messier embodied basically every positive attribute that we could wish for in an athlete. His commitment to discipline and excellence was entire. The result was his teammates' unwavering loyalty. And this was Mark's true genius, his unparalleled ability to bring out the best in others. However, the intimidating physical presence can overshadow one of the most human people that I know. Inside this hardened warrior is a soft heart, and it has served him well. Because winning teams don't just compete together, they respect, support, and care for each other. They are, in a word, family. And to this family called the New York Rangers, Mark could not have been more devoted. I have simply never experienced a person to be as genuinely excited for another success as he is. Think about how thrilled he was for Sergei Nemchinov on Sarge's first goal. His fatherly pride on the play of two rookies that same year, some kids named Tony Amante and Doug Waite. <laughs> Who can forget the embrace and his delight when Brian Leach won the Conn Smythe Trophy? <laughs> I still think Mark was more excited by that than Leachy. Finally, the ecstasy when winning the cup. Who but, who but Mark would think to hand it to the crowd? He's as much of a fan as he is a player.
Lastly, Mark demonstrated his leadership by his inclusiveness. He believed that to be successful, every single person in the organization must be respected as a critical piece of the puzzle that they are, and he demanded that of us. Just prior to the parade in 1994, he took time to remind us of the people in the front office, the training staff, and the stick boys. Acknowledge them, he said. They are as much part of our success as anybody in this locker room. He may know a little bit about winning, but he knows an awful lot about life. I'll leave you with a final story. In 1995, a young guy from Newfoundland named Darren Langdon was called up to meet us on a road trip. Being between leagues, Darren did not have any of his dress clothes. <laughs> Thanks. If memory serves me, he showed up at the airport wearing the equivalent of overalls and carrying a toothbrush. Through all the appropriate ribbing and laughter, Mark said nothing, but did recognize the importance of this likable and tough young man to the organization. The next morning, there was a brand new designer suit in Darren's size hanging in his locker. <clears throat> this gesture said it all. Congratulations and welcome. You are one of our family now. We value your contribution and are excited and we're excited for your success. <laughs> Loyal, inclusive, caring. Words not normally used to describe an athlete. But this is exactly what makes him the extraordinary person that he is. We here in New York, who are privileged to experience his mastery firsthand, have been challenged and changed for the better by his example. His impressive records may someday be broken, but his character, leadership, and sheer force of personality simply never will be matched. So on behalf of everyone fortunate enough to call you a teammate, the entire Ranger organization, and all the fans of New York, I want to say thank you to a brilliant competitor, a peerless leader, and a true friend. Thank you to Adam, Brian, and Mike. Now, it's time to hear from the man that defines what it means to be a leader. The captain, your Mark Messier. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, uh, I said yesterday, I'm not quite sure how to condense 26 years of memories into a five minute speech or trying to collect my thoughts and memories here and even know what to talk about. But tonight's uh, celebration was called a celebration of a captain. 
and I said, I'm not sure if it shouldn't be called a celebration of their garden faithful. I came here to New York in 91, so excited to come and play for the New York Rangers. A dream come true. And I would like to thank some people. Obviously, Stanley Jaffe, Mr. Bob Gakowski, and obviously, Neil Smith. for giving me the opportunity to come to New York and play for the New York Rangers and believing in me and sharing the same commitment and dreams that I had about winning a Stanley Cup in New York because without their support and unwavering commitment to excellence, we would never win the Stanley Cup here. And there's not another coach in the world that could have coached us to that Stanley Cup other than Mike Keenan. And Mike, I thank you for everything. And his assistant coach, Colin Campbell, and Dick Todd, who couldn't be here tonight. Supi, thank you for your belief in me as a person and as a player. I appreciate everything you did for me as a hockey player and your guidance through that year of a magical year for us. Thank you. Coming to New York was a dream, like I said, that I thought would never happen. I came here wanting to win a Stanley Cup and what I got was a life experience that I never I learned more about life and what was important about life coming here and seeing that there was more important things to just playing hockey and sharing in the compassion and the overall care and sincerity of the people here in New York has changed not only my life but the life of my whole, life of my whole family and I'll never forget that from you folks. No individual, no individual player can stand alone and be successful in a team sport. And I have been so blessed to have had an unbelievable support staff through my whole career, starting with obviously my family who not only were there to support me, but cared enough to be there and want to be there through my whole career. And to every player, and to every player that I've played with, and to every trainer, and to everybody that's been affected and affected me through the hockey years in the NHL, I want to thank you. And it's obviously too many to, to name everybody, but I want you to know that I'm thinking of you all. You all played a, a huge part in my success in one way or another. And the ultimate of that is the guy standing beside me or behind me here is that the
without their support and their belief and their dedication, discipline, and overall hard work, the Stanley Cup would have never come to New York no matter what. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your unwavering support for that year. And I said last night, yesterday in the press conference, nobody has been, had more of an impact on my career other than my father. Glenn was a father figure to me. He was a mentor. He was a coach. And I know I wouldn't be standing here without Glenn's support and belief in me as not only as a, as a, as a person, as a player. And Glenn, thank you. I will never forget what you did for me. There's a lot of people that aren't with us here that were here in 94 for one reason or another. Whether through tragedy or sickness or what have you, and every one of us in here has been affected by that. And we all know that they're looking down on us right now, wishing they were here to celebrate it with us. And for them, and for all of you, I want to say thank you to those folks that wish they could have been here. Retiring was a, was a tough decision, but it was a decision that I knew was the right thing to do at the right time. I've been honored to have the opportunity to play in New York, in the most famous arena in the world, to have the best fans in the world behind me. And I will never forget the 10 years that I was able to be and have the honor to be the captain of the New York Rangers. The man standing behind me right here John Davidson. I want to thank him for his unwavering support through the good times and the bad times here in New York. He believed in me. From the time I came here, he supported me in times that were tough. And to the day that I retired, he's been a loyal friend of mine. And I want to thank him for all his contributions. And also to Sam Rosen, and I've... I want to thank Sam Rosen, and I, like probably everybody else who's here, is watching the replay of the seventh game today on the MSG highlight reels. And but not only the job that they did that night, but the job that they did and still do to this day is unparalleled in the business. And thank you, Sam, for your support. And to all, and to all the Garden employees, to all the Garden employees that made this night so special and put in the hard, hard work, those names will never be mentioned because there's too many people behind the scenes that made it all happen. And to the people who make this place what it is, who are behind the scenes and who never get any credit, thank you, thank you all.
I am completely overwhelmed. I've been completely overwhelmed from the day that I came to New York. I'm completely overwhelmed tonight. And someone asked me tonight, are you ready? Are you prepared? And I said, I'm not sure if I know how to prepare this. This is like every big game that I've ever played condensed into one night. And they said, do you have a speech ready? And I go, a speech wouldn't matter. I wouldn't be able to read it anyway, so. And, and lastly, there are so many, there's so many people that I'm not mentioning, and I, it tears my heart out. But again, I want this to be a celebration tonight of the Rangers organization, of my life, of my experience as a player. And from now on, when I look up at the ceiling and see my banner up there, to me, it's going to be, to me, it's going to be a symbol. It's going to be a symbol of the hard work and dedication that all the players that I played with, all the people behind me, and for me, it's an honor to be up there beside Eddie Jockerman, Mike Richter, Rod Gilbert, and all the other greats here in this building. So, someone, someone, actually said, someone actually said tonight, well, you played with Eddie Jockerman, didn't you? <laughs> I never had the opportunity to, but I did play with Mike Richter, and Mike... It's going to be an honor beside, to be up there beside you because you're an inspiration to all of us with your dedication to the game on and off the ice and to the people here of New York. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the night has one final surprise before we hoist Mark's banner into Rangers history. As many of you know, the late Christopher Reeve was a tremendous member of the Garden Faithful. He and his family were among the team's most loyal and passionate fans. And they've been con a continuing inspiration to all of us. Chris's wife, Dana, has become a symbol of strength and courage to people everywhere. For her devotion to Chris throughout his long struggle with spinal cord injury, as well as her own personal battle with lung cancer, a battle that continues. Singing a special tribute to Mark, please welcome back to the garden our friend, now and forever, Dana Reeve.
tonight Didn't we find the ecstasy Didn't we share the daylight Mark and his family will now proceed to the 7th Avenue goal by the Stanley Cup for the raising of number 11 into Garden history.
Park on behalf of the city that you love so dearly for one last time. We ask you to lift the Stanley Cup and share it with the Ranger fans everywhere. Mark, it's time for you to take your rightful place above the ice at Madison Square Garden forever as one of the greatest Rangers in history. This will last a lifetime. It has been an honor to host this ceremony for all of you, the greatest fans in sports. With this distinguished group of current Rangers, alumni, members of Mark's family, Dana Reeve, and of course, a man who will live in our hearts and the garden for all time, Mark Messier. Thank you, Captain.